This is the PS2 of phones. Uh, let me explain. Every single day. Welcome Tech Leads, I'm Cobra. If you're old enough to remember a time in which a DVD player was so expensive that the theft of them was a major plot point in the first Fast and Furious movie, then you may remember that many people opted to buy the Sony PlayStation 2 as their primary DVD player because of its competitive price and its great at playing games, and of course vice versa. Here comes the Asus ROG Phone 2, the phone that games like no other while doing what other flagships can do, and doing them well at a lower price. Let's get this out of the way. This phone is a big boy. If you don't want the size of a phone that accommodates a 6000 milliamp battery, internal cooling system, dual front facing speakers, and a beautiful 6.59 inch 120 hertz AMOLED screen, then skip this phone now. The size of this phone is noticeable. If you need wireless charging, skip. IP rating, skip. Bezel-less design, skip. All right, let's do this. This phone screams gamer. It has a striking Tron-like design that accentuates its vent and gets flashy if you enable its RGB Republic of Gamers logo. Of course, you can cover this up when or if the right case or skin is available, or you can rock this phone with confidence. Haters gonna hate. Even though it has glorious dual front facing speakers that sound amazing, the bezels are reasonably sized and they've actually stated that this helps with hand positioning while gaming. Maybe. The more obvious gaming hardware enhancements come in the form of a pair of offset charging ports, a proprietary accessory port, headphone jack, and top mounted air triggers. Now these are game changers. I almost feel like I'm playing on a console controller. Almost. You can customize the sensitivity, location, and functionality of these touch sensitive areas. Now the power of this phone software was optimized for hardcore, graphic intensive, high frame rate games. And it does so without any hiccups or slowdowns at all. I have the Chinese Tencent edition, which has a lower amount of RAM at 8 gigabytes. Yes, I said lower at 8 gigabytes. The global edition has a whopping 12 gigabytes. Both boast the Snapdragon 855 Plus and a bunch of other high sounding impressive tech specs, but we all know performance is what really matters. Link to the specs in the description, along with my spec heavy first impressions video. Me not being a mobile gamer have had a very hard time not gaming on this beast. It started out with me gaming for the culture and ended up really, really enjoying it, like a little too much. The screen is beautiful. The input lag felt instantaneous. And while playing games that are capable of 120 frames per second, there will be no going back. I can't wait for PUBG to get that rumored update. You can access Asus's Game Genie by swiping from the left of any game. This gives you real-time game data as well as access to any adjustments you would want to make. Even turning on X mode that will overclock the processor to really boost your experience. Full gaming video is in the description as well. Now if this phone can do all this, imagine how it performs against your favorite flagship. I don't know what you may use your phone for, but this thing handles day-to-day -day tasks flawlessly. I even made a whole 4K video with it just to find some limitations. Power Director has never run so nicely. The ROG's interface is smooth and intuitive. I disabled and or hid all of the Chinese apps and that's thanks to a very customizable interface. I was able to make this phone look how I want it. And like its impressive and underrated cousin the Zenfone 6, it includes an FM tuner, audio wizard equalizer and outdoor mode that is supposed to raise the volume but I didn't notice it as much as I did on the Z6. Where it differs from the Zenfone is that instead of a rear capacitive fingerprint scanner it has an in-display one that works most of the time at the right angle and works fast enough. Not that big of a fan of it but it's there. It also has a nifty quick action named Optiflex that claims to accelerate app launches that I keep on my main apps. Surprisingly, this seems to work well.
The ROG 2 also has a very limited always on display and smart features from knock on gestures to the good old squeeze function. Ace has really brought the house with this device. If I went through everything that this phone offers, this would be a 45 minute review and I wouldn't and couldn't even listen to myself talk for that long. Now I'm not a camera expert, but I know what I do and don't like. I do like the rear cameras and I do not like the front camera. Most rear cameras perform much better than its front facing counterpart, but this difference is laughable. So much that I've religiously used the rear camera for all photos, including selfies. Thanks to the suggestion from some gadget guy. The dual rear setup is the ever so popular Sony IMEX sensor that was great on the Zenfone and very similar on the ROG. They even brought over all the same modes, including the head scratching inclusion of motion tracking. The Z6 has a motorized camera, and other than autofocus, I can't really find a purpose for it here. But the photos are natural, crisp, and really shine in daylight. Night mode is okay, but I wouldn't rely on it for very, very dark environments. Portrait mode has good and accurate depth effects, but the best part about it is that it doesn't zoom in like it does on most phones. There's also time lapse, slow mode up to 480 frames per second in 720, panorama, and yes, pro mode. And I know we all love wide angle. Now, even though the ROG can record at 4K 60, I keep it at 30 frames per second because of the focusing struggles it has at the higher frame rate. The electronic image stabilization works much better at 30 frames per second as well. Now, don't judge this phone's camera by putting it in the gaming phone category and stop comparing phone shots for shot. This is a great yet not perfect camera that most would be more than happy with. So what about that 6,000 milliamp battery? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Enough said. Trust me, gaming all day, streaming, web browsing, ridiculous. Easily the best energy performance that I've used on a smartphone. It has inspired me to keep on going on those long days when I wanna quit. You should get some comfortable and quality apparel by Inspired By All to make it through that day in style. That battery even lasts with the screen at full brightness in direct sunlight, which I might add looks just as bright as the iPhone XS Max. And I keep the display at 120 hertz. That big, smooth, dark, dark black, vibrant colored AMOLED screen is something to behold. Now 120 isn't everywhere in the phone, but where it is, it will definitely shine. Get this phone if you're a gamer. Get this phone if you want a powerhouse. Get this phone if you want the best of most worlds. But knowing everything that this phone is and what it isn't, I can say that it still may not be for me. Even though this may be the PS2 of smartphones, some of you may just be an Xbox person. All right, tech leads, Cobra told you. See you on the next one.